Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Chemistry. Today's lesson is a continuation of chapter 7, Mass Stoichiometry. So last time you learned what formula mass is and how it can be calculated. Formula mass is the sum of the atomic masses of all the elements within a compound. You also learned how to determine percent composition by mass of an element in a compound. It can be calculated using this formula shown here. We also covered the mole concept, where mole is a unit. The concept of moles basically allows us to relate the number of atoms of a given element to its mass. When converting from mass to moles and vice versa, you need the molar mass of that substance, which has the units grams per mole. Similarly, when converting from moles to number of atoms and vice versa, you need Avogadro's number, which is equivalent to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd power. And finally, you learn how to apply the mole concept in converting between mass, moles, and number of atoms, molecules, or particles. Today, you will learn about stoichiometry, which is the main goal and the heart of this chapter. By definition, stoichiometry is the quantitative relationship between the products and the reactants based on a balanced chemical reaction equation. It allows us to predict the total amount of products that can be made from a given amount of reactants. This quantitative relationship between products and reactants can be determined simply by looking at the coefficients of a balanced chemical reaction equation. You will also learn how to calculate different types of stoichiometry problems, as well as the difference between limiting and excess reactants, difference between theoretical and actual yield, and how to calculate the percent yield. Shown here is the balanced chemical reaction equation between nitrogen monoxide gas and oxygen gas. This chemical reaction equation can be read as two molecules of nitrogen monoxide gas reacting with one molecule of oxygen gas to form two molecules of nitrogen dioxide gas. This same reaction equation can also be read and understood as two moles of nitrogen monoxide gas reacting with one mole of oxygen gas to form two moles of nitrogen dioxide gas. And here's the reason. Here you can see that the ratio between the molecules based on their coefficients is 2 to 1 to 2. Two molecules of NO per one molecule of O2 per two molecules of NO2, which has the ratio 2 to 1 to 2. We can also use this ratio shown here between the molecules, 2,000 molecules of NO per 1,000 molecules of O2 per 2,000 molecules of NO2. We can go even further beyond this value and use Avogadro's number, because in reality, Chemical reactions involve billions and billions of atoms and molecules. We can simplify this by using moles as the unit. Again, as you can see here, the ratio, it, the ratio here is 2 to 1 to 2. This works as long as the ratio remains constant. Let's look at a simplified example to help you understand the concept of stoichiometry. Let's say that you work for a pizza company. Let's call it Best Pizza Out There Company. And shown here is the recipe for a simple cheese pizza that you are required to follow. If you don't follow this recipe, then you're not making the best pizza out there. Here's a ratio just between the number of crusts and pizza based on this recipe. 
if you have one crust, you could make one pizza. Here's another ratio. If you have five ounces of tomato sauce, you could make one pizza. Two cups of cheese gives you one pizza, and one crust requires two cups of cheese, and so on. These ratios are the quantitative relationship between the ingredients and the pizza. You can use these ratios to answer questions such, such as this one. How many pizzas can you make with six cups of cheese, assuming that you have enough supply of all the other ingredients? So here we have six cups of cheese. We can use dimensional analysis to convert our six cups of cheese into the number of pizzas. The ratio between cheese and pizza is two to one. We'll put cups of cheese at the bottom and number of pizza up top with a two to one ratio, two cups of cheese per one pizza. Now you can see that the cups of cheese will cancel, will, will cancel each other out and we get three pizzas out of the six cups of cheese. Here's another one. How many ounces of tomato sauce do you need to make 10 pizzas? Again, assuming that you have enough of the other ingredients. Let's start with what's given, 10 pizzas. The ratio between tomato sauce and the number of pizzas, according to the recipe, is 5 to 1. 5 ounces of tomato sauce per 1 pizza. Using dimensional analysis, we get the following setup where the number of pizzas cancels out. We would need a total of 50 ounces of tomato sauce in order to make 10 pizzas. So st stoichiometry is basically a ratio and proportion type of concept. Now let's apply this ratio and proportion concept in chemistry. Here's a balanced chemical reaction equation the combustion of methane. How many moles of carbon dioxide gas, CO2, can be generated from 10 moles of CH4? Here we have to use the ratio between CO2 and CH4 in moles, which is simply the mole ratio. The ratio between CO2 and CH4 is basically one to one, based on the coefficients. The first step is to always want to make sure that the reaction itself is balanced. And then write down what's given, which is basically our starting point. And finally, use mole ratio between the molecules. Here's what's given, 10 moles of CH4. Set up your dimensional analysis and include the mole ratio, which is one to one, based on the coefficients. Here you can see the moles of CH4 canceling out, and this gives us 10 moles of CO2. Here's another example. How many moles of oxygen gas, O2, are needed to react completely with 20 moles of CH4? 20 moles CH4 is going to be our starting point. Next, set up the dimensional analysis and mole ratio so that the moles CH4 cancel out. So 20 moles of CH4 will react completely with 40 moles of oxygen gas. 20 times 2 divided by 1 equals 40 moles of oxygen gas. Here's another example straight from the book. See if you can solve this by yourself and feel free to pause this video. When magnesium burns, it combines with oxygen to form a new compound, magnesium oxide. The balance equation for this reaction is shown below. If this reaction consumes three moles of oxygen, how many moles of magnesium oxide will form? 
and how many grams of magnesium oxide will form. Since this equation is already balanced, we can move on to the next step by setting up the dimensional analysis. We have three moles of oxygen gas and it's asking, and it's asking us how many moles of magnesium oxide, MgO, will form. So we need the mole ratio between oxygen gas and magnesium oxide which is 2 to 1 based on the coefficients. Here you can see that this reaction will generate a total of 6 moles of magnesium oxide. 3 times 2 equals 6, 6 moles of magnesium oxide. The second question here in this example is how many grams of magnesium oxide will form? You learned at the beginning of this chapter how to convert from mass to moles, which requires the molar mass of the compound. So here, all we have to do is convert the moles of magnesium oxide that we just calculated into grams of magnesium oxide. Again, we already know the reaction is balanced. Now we can calculate the molar mass of the compound, magnesium oxide, which is 40.31 grams per mole. Then, use dimensional analysis to convert the 6 moles of magnesium oxide to mass in grams. Moles will be at the bottom and grams up top. You can see here that moles of magnesium oxide will cancel out. And this gives us 242 grams of magnesium oxide, or 240 grams with proper number of sig figs. So 6 times 40.31 gives us 242, and then we round this down to 240 grams of magnesium oxide. Here's another example from the book. Pause this video if you want to work on this independently. Sodium metal reacts violently with water, as shown in the balance equation below. How many moles of hydrogen gas are produced by the reaction of 11 grams of sodium with water? Here, we have to calculate the number of moles of hydrogen gas from 11 grams of sodium. So this is our starting point. The first step here is to convert the mass in grams to moles. Set up the dimensional analysis as shown here. And this gives us 0 0.478 mole of sodium. The next step is to use moles of sodium that we just calculated as the new starting point. And the mole ratio between sodium and hydrogen gas in order to determine the moles of hydrogen gas. Here you can see the moles of sodium cancelling out, which gives us 0.239 moles of hydrogen gas. Here's another example. Lithium metal reacts with nitrogen gas according to the balance equation. Based on this equation, how many moles of nitrogen gas are required to react with 12 moles of lithium? How many moles of lithium nitride are produced in this reaction? And how many grams of lithium nitride are produced? Here we have to determine the following. Moles of nitrogen gas and lithium nitride, as well as the mass of lithium nitride in grams. We are given 12 moles of lithium, and this is going to be our starting point. Set up the dimensional analysis and the mole ratio between lithium and nitrogen gas, which is 6 to 1 based on the coefficients. Moles of lithium, as you can see here, will cancel out, and that gives us 2 moles of nitrogen gas. 12 times 1 divided by 6 
equals 2 moles of nitrogen gas. We can use the information regarding nitrogen gas, or lithium, to find the moles of lithium nitride. For simplicity, let's use 12 moles of lithium as our starting point. Again, you can see here, we need to set up the dimensional analysis with the mole ratio, but this time between lithium and lithium nitride. Moles of lithium cancel out which gives us 4 moles of lithium nitride. 12 times 2 divided by 6 equals 4 moles of lithium nitride. Now we can convert the number of moles of lithium nitride to mass in grams of this compound as shown. And we get 139 grams of lithium nitride. So 4 times 34.83 gives us 139 grams of lithium nitride. Here's one last example. Sulfur dioxide can react with oxygen gas as shown in this balanced equation. How many moles of sulfur dioxide are required to produce 40 moles of sulfur trioxide? How many moles of oxygen gas are required? As stated, this is already a balanced equation, so we can go ahead and move on to the next step. This problem is asking us two things, the number of moles of sulfur dioxide and the number of moles of oxygen gas. And it says here that our starting point is 40 moles of sulfur trioxide. Set up your dimensional analysis and mole ratio between sulfur trioxide and sulfur dioxide, as shown. You can see here that the moles of SO3 will cancel out, and this yields 40 moles of SO3. 40 times 2 divided by 2 is 40 moles of SO3. So you can see that the mole ratio between SO2 and SO3 is essentially 1 to 1. To calculate the moles of oxygen gas required for this reaction, we can use 40 moles SO3 as our starting point. Set up the dimensional analysis with the mole ratio between SO3 and O2 as shown. Again, you can see here that the moles of SO3 will cancel each other out and gives us 20 moles of oxygen gas. 40 times 1 divided by 2 equals 20 moles of oxygen gas. Another type of stoichiometry problem that you will encounter involves mass-to-mass -mass conversions. In a balanced chemical reaction equation, you may be given the mass of A, some element or compound, and then find the mass of B, a different element or compound, in the same reaction equation. The first thing you want to do is to convert the mass into moles of A. Then, calculate the moles of B by using the mole ratio between A and B based on the balanced chemical reaction equation. Once you get the moles of B, you can convert that to mass in grams of B using the molar mass of that compound. You can use dimensional analysis to solve this type of problem, as shown here. The first step is converting mass to moles of A. Then use mole ratio between, between A and B to get the moles of B. And finally, convert the moles of B to mass of B in grams. Here's an example. When heated with a Bunsen burner, magnesium carbonate decomposes to magnesium oxide and carbon dioxide, as shown in the equation. If 5.24 grams of magnesium carbonate are heated in this manner, how many grams of magnesium oxide 
can be produced. Here, we're given 524, 5.24 grams of magnesium carbonate, which is going to be our starting point. And we have to calculate the mass in grams of magnesium oxide that can be generated from this equation. So first, convert mass of magnesium carbonate to moles. Then, use mole ratio between magnesium carbonate and magnesium oxide based on their coefficients. And finally, convert moles of magnesium oxide to grams of magnesium oxide. Here's our starting point, 5.24 grams of magnesium carbonate. Convert this to moles using the molar mass of magnesium carbonate, which is 84.32 grams per mole. Then use mole ratio between the two compounds, magnesium oxide and magnesium carbonate. And finally, use the molar mass of magnesium oxide to convert the moles to mass. And this reaction yields 2.51 grams of magnesium oxide. So here we have 5.24 times 40.31 divided by 84.32 and this gives us 2.51 grams of magnesium oxide. Shown here is a reaction between solid copper and bromine gas. How many grams of copper 1 bromide are produced from the reaction of 24.6 grams of copper in this reaction? How many grams of bromine are required to react with this amount of copper? If we have 24.6 grams of copper, how much copper 1 bromide would be produced? Here's the step-by-step -step process. First, convert mass of copper to moles of copper. Then, from moles of copper to moles of copper 1 bromide, using the mole ratio between them based on their coefficients. And finally, from moles of the compound to mass in grams. Here's our starting point, 24.6 grams of copper. Use dimensional analysis by first converting the mass of copper to moles of copper. Then apply mole ratio between the substances to get the moles of copper 1 bromide. And finally, convert the moles of the compound to mass in grams. This reaction produces 55.5 grams of copper 1 bromide. So basically, we're multiplying all the numbers up top divided by all the numbers at the bottom. So 24.6 times 2 times 143.45 divided by 63.55 times 2. And this yields 55.5 grams of copper 1 bromide. Here's another example from the book that you might want to try. You may pause this video now. Our starting point here is 5.20 moles of aluminum. Set up your dimensional analysis. Notice that aluminum is already in moles, and so we can just go straight to using mole ratio. Then convert moles of hydrogen gas to mass in grams. And this gives us 15.8 grams of hydrogen gas. 5.20 times 3 times 2.02 .02 divided by 2 gives us 15.8 grams of hydrogen gas. Last example. Last example here. Iron reacts with oxygen gas as shown in this balance equation. How many moles of oxygen are needed to react with 82.1 grams of iron. Our starting point here is 82.1 grams of iron. Set up your dimensional analysis and convert mass in grams. 
So the molar mass of iron is 55.85 grams per mole. Then use mole ratio between iron and oxygen gas as shown here. And this gives us 1.10 moles of oxygen gas. 82.1 times 3 divided by 55.85 times 4 gives us 1.10 moles of oxygen gas. Here's a visual representation of molecules in a chemical reaction inside of a container. On the left, we have the reactants, unreacted, and on the right, we have the products after the reaction. As you can see here, we have two reactants, methane, CH4, and oxygen gas, O2. This combination reaction generates water and carbon dioxide, which are the products. And this is the balanced chemical reaction equation. Notice on the product side in, inside the container, there are oxygen gas molecules. There are oxygen gas molecules present. These unreacted oxygen gas molecules are called excess reactants. These are extra reactants or leftovers. There are two types of reactants. The first one is called limiting reactant, which is the substance that gets consumed completely in the chemical reaction. They call it limiting because it limits the amount of product that you can make. The second type of reactant is the excess reactant, which is essentially the extra unreacted substance. The last and final concept that I want to cover in this chapter is knowing the difference between theoretical yield and percent yield. Theoretical yield is defined as the calculated maximum amount of product that can be made from a balanced chemical reaction equation. Percent yield, on the other hand, is the actual amount of product made from the chemical reaction relative to the one that was calculated, the theoretical. Here's the formula for percent yield, which is the actual amount of product obtained divided by the theoretical amount times 100%. These two terminologies are important because it allows us to determine the efficiency of a chemical reaction. A high percent yield, like 80%, suggests a highly efficient reaction, whereas a low percent yield, like 30%, suggests an inefficient reaction. There's a lot of factors that can affect the percent yield, but that's another topic for discussion. Here's an example. The reaction between magnesium and oxygen gas produced 25 grams of magnesium oxide. If the theoretical yield is 34.5 grams, what is the percent yield for this reaction? Here's the formula for percent yield. The actual yield was 25 grams, but it was theoretically calculated that you could have made as much as 34.5 grams. Plugging these numbers into the equation gives us 72.5% yield. And that completes chapter 7. As always, thank you for watching, and if you like this video, please subscribe, and I'll see you next time.